of Israel, the Honorable Rodica Radian Gordon, Ambassador of the State of Israel to Mexico, Salomon Achar, President-elect of the Jewish Community Central Committee, all my dear colleagues at the Central Committee, Presidents of the Communities and Institutions of the Jewish Community of Mexico, ladies and gentlemen, friends, it is an honor to gather here today to engage in a conversation with one of the world's most important leaders of our time, and especially as it relates to us as members of the Jewish people and Zionists who believe in the promise of the State of Israel. It is hard to describe President Perez in a few words, since he has had a lifetime of impressive accomplishments. He is a politician, a statesman, a philosopher, an entrepreneur. More importantly, however, Shimon Peres represents in his persona, his ideas, his work, and his values, the contemporary history of the Jewish people. From the traumas of the Holocaust to the determination to build up our strength as a people and rebuild our nation, to the commitment to peace and the Olam, that are the hallmarks of the Jewish people. President Perez embodies our past, our present, and more importantly, our future. Sworn in as the ninth president of the State of Israel in July 2007, Shimon Perez has been an inseparable part of Israel's political history. He served as a member of Knesset for 48 years, was a minister in 12 cabinets, and served twice as prime minister. As you can imagine, it is impossible to summarize such a brilliant career. So I want to point out some of the most defining moments which illustrate his leadership as both the architect of Israel's security and the ultimate champion for peace. In terms of security, President Perez served as Director General of the Ministry of Defense early on his career, where he was involved in finding the IDF supply sources for modern weaponry and establishing strategic alliances with key countries. As a result, President Perez was a key figure in laying out the foundations for the country's defense, aerospace, and electronic industries. Given that success, Ben Gurion appointed him to head the effort to establish Israel's nuclear program and other security milestones. However, concurrent with this effort to fortify the, fortify the country's security, President Perez worked diligently to bring peace. Yes, peace. Throughout the years, he always maintained close relationship with the key Arab leaders and directed the covert negotiations in Oslo, which led to the Oslo Agreement and earned him and its hack Rabin the Nobel Peace Prize in 1994. Recognizing that peace requires goodwill among people, not just leaders, he established the Perez Peace Center in 1996, which seeks to initiate and operate joint projects between Israelis, Palestinians, Jordanians, and Egyptians in the fields as diverse as economy, culture, education, sports, computers, agriculture, communications, and medicine. A true sign of Mr. Perez's commitment to peace came in 2005 when Prime Minister Ariel Sharon asked him to join him in the founding of a new party, Kadima, in order to push for the unilateral evacuation of the Gaza Strip and reignite the peace process with the Palestinians on the basis of the principle of two states for two people. Despite being political adversaries, despite being political adversaries, President Perez left the Labour Party, his political home of decades, and joined Prime Minister Sharon in the interest of peace. 
Unfortunately, as we all know, peace remains elusive, but the efforts continue. Today, as President of the State of Israel, he has worked diligently to improve the welfare of Israel's citizens by promoting civil equality for all, for all and reducing some of the country's most glaring social gaps. As part of this effort, he focused on emphasizing the value of education as a tool for personal empowerment and for maximizing the human capital of the State of Israel. Security, peace, tikkun olam. These words encapsulate Shimon Peres' legacy and serve as a badge of honor that all of us, all Jews, all Israelis, all citizens of the world should seek to emulate as we strive to be better men and women. I would like to share with you a famous quote from the President. Optimists and pessimists die the same way. They just live differently. And I prefer to live as an optimist. Mr. President, I had lived as an optimist and I got here. So I think you were right. And I'm sure you are right. Thank you so much for being here with the Jewish community of Mexico today. It is really a great honor. In the same way that we are proud of the great achievements of the State of Israel, our community is proud of the accomplishments of the past hundred years. This is a community proud of its educational system. Tonight, we have 250 children from our schools that were selected to have the honor of hearing your message. Allow me to tell you that 95% of the Jewish children in Mexico attend Jewish schools, where they get not only an excellent education, but also the Jewish values that we transmit, midor ledor. Every Jewish kid in Mexico traveled to Israel at the end of the ninth grade and many more on special programs like March of the Living or Akshara. As you can see, we are a very proud Zionist community. We have wonderful institutions and communities that are all with us and that provide all the necessary services to live the Jewish life and more. We are thankful to this beautiful country that has not only received in the past our forefathers, but also has been respectful of our religions and traditions. And I can say proudly that in Mexico, we, the Jews, live in peace and harmony with the rest of our countrymen. And you could be an honored guest yesterday, and you saw how we are close and very close part of the citizens of this country, our Mexico. Allow me to finish by saying that this moment will forever be engraved in our memory and in the history of our community, as well as in our Mexico. Thank you for being with us tonight, and we wish you the best of the best in your personal and public life. Baruch Haba.